The 99-year-old rolling lift, single-leaf bascule Galveston Causeway Railroad Bridge was known to be the most dangerous bridge on the Intracoastal Waterway. In addition to its narrow 108-foot width, mariners had to negotiate a significant curve in the waterway on either side of the bridge while facing strong south-to-north winds and east-to-west tidal currents in the area. More accidents occurred as a result of collisions with this railroad bridge than any other on the Gulf Coast, costing more than $2 million annually. The U.S. Coast Guard deemed the bridge a navigational hazard and directed the bridge to be replaced. The highway bridge was widened to a 310-foot clearance, and it was deemed the railroad bridge would be widened to the same distance, nearly tripling its overall width. Chinbro and Brassfield and Gorey came together as a joint venture and won the contract for the bridge replacement. Due to the size of the bridge and the location of its final destination, the new single track vertical lift span bridge was constructed on land at a site approximately three miles from the channel. Burke Alter was subcontracted for the transportation of the new lift span bridge to the final bridge site, as well as the removal of the existing bascule bridge. Burkhalter's submission for SCNRA's hauling job of the year is for the transport, roll-on, and towing to site of the new lift span bridge, as well as the towing back to the construction yard, roll-off, and transport to the final destination of the old bascule bridge. The new lift span bridge was 386 feet 8 inches long, by 22 feet 9 inches wide, and 64 feet 8 inches high. The bridge weighed 3 million pounds. The old bascule bridge was 153 feet long, 22 feet 8 inches wide, and 56 feet 6 inches high. The bridge weighed 1,700,000 pounds. Transport new lift span bridge from construction point three tenths of a mile, roll on to barge, and tow three miles to the channel site. Tow existing bascule bridge from channel site three miles to the dock, roll off of the barge, and transport to final destination three tenths of a mile from the dock. Challenges Stability of the new lift span bridge. The vast difference in the height and width of the bridge versus its 23-foot wide depth led to major concerns about its stability during transport. Weight distribution of the bascule bridge. By design, the bascule bridge's center of gravity was off-center by 45 feet, positioned on one side of the bridge and creating weight distribution issues on the transporters and the barge. Time frame. It's already challenging enough to move a 387-foot wide 68-foot tall bridge, but Burkhalter was working against the clock. There was a set 72-hour marine closure and within that, two 12-hour railroad closures. The bridge had to be at the site prior to the first railroad closure so that the rigging portion of the work could be done within the rail closure, after which previously scheduled rail traffic could then resume. Burkhalter's contract provided for strict hourly penalties if these timelines were not met. Conditions of the road at construction site. The bridge was constructed approximately three-tenths of a mile from the dock site. As was stipulated in the contract, Burkhalter planned the job with the assumption that a feasible roadway would be available on the construction site to transport the bridge to the barge. When we showed up and started putting trailers together to get ready for this move, uh, the client was supposed to have provided a road for us from the storage yard across, across the yard and to load on the dock. But they waited too long to prepare this road and, and by now it's, it's been raining for a week or two. It's, the yard is basically a soggy mess. So we needed a solution. We had a time constraint. We had a set day that this bridge had to be set. And we didn't need over 500 wheels being stuck with a three million pound bridge on top of it in the middle of the yard and nowhere to go. We decided to make the road with plastic mats. We surveyed the yard taking measurements and came up with a plan and a number of mats needed. We soon had mats rolling in by the truckload. 
We laid the mats out, built a road, and stayed on schedule. Obstacles on the construction yard. In order to get the bridge from the construction site to the dock, Burkhalter crews had to maneuver the bridge around an existing rail bed as well as a bay inlet. Dock stability. While the dock wall was believed to be plenty stable, a three million pound load still brings stability concerns with it. Routing. Due to the enormous loads, the barge size required was too deep for the waterway's main path. Weather. During the move, Crews face cold and windy conditions. So we're in Galveston, Texas in February 2012, and it was Mardi Gras. Most people start thinking about the weather turning nice and, and having beautiful days. Well, let me tell you, we, it became an issue. It was cold, cloudy, and very, very windy. And with the wind coming off that water, like with gale force winds, it actually blew my hard hat off my head into the water one time. Uh, some of my guys joked around they saw a pelican wearing it later. Uh, but we were moving a 65 foot tall, 400 foot long bridge that was only 23 feet wide. And we got it across two of our uh, sets of gold offer trailers, self propelled gold offer trailers. Uh, while that's inherently stable, uh, when you get that kind of wind load, it raised concerns to us. So we utilized a number of tie downs to make sure that that we had it secured properly before we embarked on rolling onto the barge. The bridges were both transported using a total of 64 lines SPMT, made up of 24 lines of Goldhofer PST and 40 lines of THP that were in two 16-line, four-file configurations. We moved this bridge using two double-wide trailer configurations. The problem was these trailers were spaced too far apart to use any type of bracing so that they would act as one. They were literally only tied together through the ground and the bridge itself. So we ended up programming these two trailers to work as one so that as they moved through the yard and turned and navigated down to the roll-on site, they would act as one large trailer and turn in unison. A 300 by 100 ABS deck barge was utilized to transport the bridge sections. Clients' initial plans were to use a 250 by 72 barge However, the Burkhalter engineers determined that the extra width of the larger 300 by 100 ABS barge would provide much greater stability. Since the initial route was not deep enough to accommodate the 3 by 1 barge, we mapped out an alternative route through the channel using precise depth analysis. The entire route was GPS mapped with exact data points. As always, safety is essential, and the focus here was no different. Burkhalter always follows a one-time right philosophy, which was crucial in this job since there was only one opportunity to get it right. The key to the one-time right philosophy is having both sound execution and safety plans and a commitment to follow those plans. Burkhalter's safety plan and procedures consisted of a number of additional layers on this job due to the nature of the job and the number of agencies involved. Obviously, OSHA is always a presence, but this job added the U.S. Coast Guard, BNSF Railroad, the RailSafe Program, and the Joint Ventures Programs, in addition to Burkhalter's Safety Program. With this number of agencies involved, all with their own policies and procedures, the chance for the rules to get convoluted was pretty high. But in this situation, as in others, crews followed the most stringent of the policies in order to comply with all rules and regulations set forth. Although Burkhalter wasn't working specifically on the rail line itself, the rules were still applicable. Each crew member or Burkhalter employee had to take a RailSafe class, pass a test, and receive RailSafe certification before working on site. In addition, they went through safety orientations with the joint venture and with BNSF. Open communication was required with BNSF's railroad flagman who in turn was in communication with the trains. This flagman had to approve all activities done near the rail, even if that was simply walking across the tracks. Standard personal protective equipment was worn by all crew during the job, including hard hats, safety glasses, and steel toe boots. Each crew member was also outfitted with a high visibility safety flotation vest that was in accordance with railroad specific colors, materials, and design. 
a temporary barrier was installed around the perimeter of the barge. When working outside of this barrier, crew were required to tie off a full body harness to the rat line that ran six feet around the edge of the barge. Plastic mats were brought in and laid down to cover the muddy yard. Once the road was complete, the transporters were then positioned under the supports the bridge was set upon. The bridge was then secured to the transporters and transported across the yard utilizing two separate trailers programmed to operate in unison. Since we were on a limited schedule, Burkhalter took the added precaution to contract for an on-site Goldhofer technical assistant to be available to help resolve any equipment issues which might arise. As a result of Burkhalter's preparation, no mechanical breakdowns occurred and the technician's assistance was not required. Once at the dock, Burkhalter had to deal with a potentially unstable dock wall and the inclined slope to transport the three million pound bridge onto the waiting barge. Anytime you're rolling a load onto a barge, one of the major concerns is where you're going across the threshold from the land onto a barge when it's a floating situation. And we were floating as we went on, so it was a ballasted operation, very slow maneuvers. However, you know, it's always bothersome when you're part of the way on and part of the way on, about off, about the halfway point. Uh, anytime you're doing that, even though you've, you've done your research and you, you know the dot wall and where you're pl placing the forces, or the dot wall is good for that, it's still one of your major concerns if you put forces on that dot wall that cause it to start failing out into the, into the water. So we had, uh, we had fixed a point there and pulled a tape measure and monitored that very closely to see if there was ever any movement uh, in that. And I'm pleased to report that it never was. Once the transporters were properly positioned onto the barge, 36 tie downs were installed to secure the barge and transporter for the barge tow to the installation site. Burkhalter staged the barge the evening before the leave in preparation for the early morning crossing. As a safety measure to compensate for the strong winds, the barge was turned in order to better protect the bridge. So we set sail that morning and followed our GPS route out to the bridge site. As we got very close, we could hear them talking on the bridge and we're told later on that they could hear us, but they could not see us. We could see the gunboats that the Coast Guard had out there with M50s mounted on the bow. That was something that I hadn't seen in any of our operations in the past. After the new lift span bridge was delivered, the Baskill Bridge was picked up to return to the construction yard. The barge traveled the same route via GPS points back to the dock. The Baskill Bridge was rolled off the barge, however stability was a concern due to the imbalance of the bridge's weight. We programmed the trailers to work together in unison on both moves, which it worked perfect on the lift span move but on the Baskill Bridge move, we started having problems as soon as we rolled off the barge. Whenever we rolled off the barge, we attempted to make our first turn with the load, and the offset in the center of gravity caused a problem. It was not enough friction on one of our trailers from the load. We realized this was no longer an effective way to transport. So we stopped everything. We put a chain between the two trailers to monitor the alignment. We separated the steering on the trailers and we steered them separately until it got to its final resting place, which was like 400 yards away. We worked with our client to develop the specific plans to execute the transport across the land onto the barge and carry it up to the set point uh, on the bridge. One of the problems we had though, real time, during the start of the project was our client didn't start building or making sure of the roadway between the location of where the bridge was erected and the barge location. And then it rained for like two weeks. So we had real issues with that, but they were pleased when we came up with solutions to map that whole way in a reasonably economical fashion, in a safe fashion. Uh, you'll see in some of this video where that road was turned out to be a good quality piece of work our people came up with. Uh, we had an innovative plan to, to load the bridge onto the barge. 
maneuver the barge up to the location and then remove the existing basket bridge, which had a different configuration altogether, bring it back to shore, roll it off and place it at the same place where they erected the new one. That bridge was later relocated to California and installed there. They decided to knock it down and put it on rail cars in stick built fashion. Uh, we came in under the time restraints. Our customer was very happy. Our team executed a great plan. Hey, Delenn, it's Brian Watson. Just uh, calling to congratulate you on a job well done today. Uh, uh, very impressive. I did just exactly what you said you would do, and, uh, and I really appreciate it. And on behalf of all of us here at the Joint Venture, I just wanted to say thank you. Burkhalter successfully completed the job as required by the firm fixed price contract. We completed the job safely and on time with no injuries, delays, or property damage. We transported, rolled onto a barge, and towed the new lift span bridge in under the allotted time window, as well as towed, rolled off of the barge, and transported the existing bascule bridge in under the allotted time window. The obstacles we overcame, stability issues with the new lift span bridge, weight distribution issues with the existing bascule bridge. We completed the job in a very limited time window. Wet, uneven road at the transport site. Negotiated a rail bed and bay inlet at the construction yard. Dock stability issues. Shallow routing in the channel. Windy, cold weather. Engineering. Program trailers to work together in unison. Utilized a larger barge for greater stability. Pre-program the route via exact GPS coordinates.